If the ninth prime minister fails, can the king appoint a minority government without a majority? I tell you, it's a difficult question, but my answer is under constitutional law and under the principle of necessity, yes. What will happen if a small sabre is not able to cobble a cabinet? If the current prime minister is unable to form a cabinet from the 114 MPs supporting him, then he has to fall back on a majority government from a block of MPs currently controlled by the opposition. If he is able to bring together such a government, despite all the difficulties he faces from his current component parties, he may still survive their onslaught. There are several examples where no single party is able to command the confidence of the majority of the MPs in the House of Representatives or Devon Raya, and yet governments have been formed without resorting to another silly emergency. So let's look at some of the examples. Most of the examples I'm about to cite are concerned with those situations where there is a lack of majority after an election. Typically, this happens when there exists a party with the most number of seats after an election, but that number of seats has not crossed a number representing a majority of the total number of MPs in the lower house. There have been several examples of prime ministers losing support partway through their administration. A good example is the post-war cabinet of Winston Churchill. After the Second World War in 1945, Clement Attlee withdrew his support from the war cabinet, which was led by Winston. Without a majority, Winston Churchill found to his consternation that his position as prime minister was completely undermined. The monarch, in order to save the situation, King George, gave Winston several days to form a minority government. Churchill then submitted a list of cabinet members. The condition that the king imposed upon Churchill was that Churchill would hold an election as soon as possible. Churchill did and promptly lost the election, but he would of course be re-elected in the year 1951. What's the position in Malaysia? That position is not possible in Malaysia currently because of the threat of the pandemic. You can't hold an election. The current prime minister has no choice but to try as hard as he can to cobble together a workable coalition. This he may get from his colleagues in the Prikata National, which incidentally wants now to be called by some other name. Or PM Ismail may choose to work with opposition MPs, although that is the unthinkable. That is the only way out for Ismail Sobre if he's pushed into a corner. All he needs to do is to walk into the opposition camp with just over 23 MPs. He may ask them to be part of his cabinet. Yet, when he does that, the opposition camp may keep him, but dethrone him. If that happens, someone from the current opposition may wish to be appointed as prime minister. We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Let me give you examples of minority governments in other countries. Let's take the United Kingdom, which bears the closest resemblance to our country. In 1923, the Conservative Party lost its majority at the general election. It couldn't form a coalition. The party was led by Stanley Baldwin. After that, in the traditional vote that followed the King's speech, he lost and he resigned. Ramsay MacDonald then took office. He was from the Labour Party. It was a minority government. That lasted until October of 1924. In 1974, again, 50 years later, the Conservative Party would lose its majority. Edward Heath remained as caretaker prime minister and he tried his hand to form a coalition. He failed. A general election was then held on a Thursday. Despite the election, by Monday morning, Edward had failed to form a coalition. He had to resign as prime minister. A second general election was held in 1974. Labour returned with a wafer-thin majority of three MPs. In order to survive desertions, the Labour government had to enlist the support of the Liberal Party, called the Lib Lab 
pact. That lasted until May of 1978. Again, in the year 2010, the election produced a hung parliament. The Labour government remained as caretaker government until a coalition government was formed between the Conservative and the Liberal Democrats on the 12th of May 2010. Then move forward another seven years and in 2017, the Conservative Party again lost its majority. It then entered into a supply and confidence agreement with the Democratic Unionist Party. So it is up to the King to make a decision. These examples show that had the King desired it, His Majesty the King Yang Dipurto Anagum could have asked Pakatan Harapan to form a minority government pending the next election. However, that option was thwarted when Ismail Sobri turned up with a wafer thin majority of 114. This allowed Ismail Sabri to be appointed as Prime Minister on the 20th of August 2021. After the passing of five days, no cabinet has been named. That's not a good sign. The days ahead are uncertain and dark. Unless Prime Minister Ismail Sabre is able to hold his coalition members together, it looks like we are all headed into deep waters. At that point, the king may then be forced to cobble together a minority government. This will hopefully last until the next election in May of the year 2023. Historical example point to the fact that this last resort method can still be wielded by the king without a majority. This is because under Article 40, the king still has some residual discretion who he wishes to appoint as prime minister. Secondly, under Article 43, Clause 2, the king only needs to appoint a prime minister who, in his opinion, is likely to command the majority of the members of parliament. The PM candidate need not be one who in fact commands the majority just now. An election may be the only way out if recalcitrant members of different coalitions refuse to come together in the interest of the nation. The next question is, should Malaysia change the way it selects its prime minister? That's another video and another question for another day. Watch this space. Good night.